knows where you are because your little beeper is telling them GPS-wise that you are here Taking on video. the 20th of March at 8 p.m. And that data is being stored. It's being stored. Our government says, don't worry about it. We're just storing it in case we need it sometime. Uh, we don't know when it will be, and we don't know why it will be, but just in case we need to know where you were at that time. Hmm. Privacy? Hmm. Freedom of association without government in, in interference with us? So a year from now, all of a sudden you get a knock on the door. Uh, we've traced uh, that you were here at Reeves Center on March 20th, and uh, we want to know why you were in the presence of Medea. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we know who was sitting next to you, too, because we can tell by the GPS who was in which chair. And why were you there with that person? And what were they saying from the stage? Were they talking about the degradation of civil liberties in the United States, and why were they saying that? And what did they say about the Obama administration? And what did they say about the Bush administration? I mean, these are the serious questions that we have right now for our government. Why do they want to know this? Why are they keeping all of this data in the largest supercomputer ever built in the world, is now in Utah, that's capturing every one of your, some, your cell phones, Every one of your emails is being stored, is being housed for the day that somebody in the government says, we want to know. These are things that we should not be sitting here. We should be out on the streets. We should be raising hell. We should be finding out what the world's going on. We should be in Congress every day. How many of you all have ever been to a congressional hearing? And where are we? Illinois. That's not that far. I mean, it's only an overnight bus ride from here to Washington, D.C. And Medea Benjamin can certainly help you organize which yeah. congressional hearing you need to be going into. Now, when, which one of these intelligence oversight hearings do we need to go in to press those congressmen and women who actually have known a long, long time what our government's been doing? It didn't take Ed Snowden. He wasn't the first one to actually tell our Congress what's been going on. Although most congressmen and women will say, oh, we didn't know to that extent. We didn't know quite that much. Well, I would say, let's give a big load of thanks to some people who are probably going to end up in jail. I mean, you talk about Ed Snowden in jail in his own way in, a, in some place in Moscow right now. You talk about another person who's leaked government secrets that I think we've all found to be pretty interesting. A young man named Chelsea, a young woman now, named mm -hmm. Chelsea Manning, Manning, leaking to WikiLeaks the greatest array of government documents <coughs> since the Pentagon Papers and Daniel Ellsberg. A young, man, a young woman who's now sitting in Leavenworth, Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, 35 years in prison. We have another person who's in a prison in a way, the, the Ecuadorian Embassy in London, the co-founder of WikiLeaks. <laughs> Julian Assange, a journalist who has published documents that our government does not want us to see. But that's one of the reasons why our civil, civil rights, our civil liberties are so important, that we need to be able to ferret out what our government doesn't want us to see. Most of the time, they'll classify it. They'll classify their criminal actions so that if you try to dig into it, you're going to be a violator of our of our laws because you're looking into classified information. Yeah, classified, it's criminal stuff our government's doing. That's what got Bradley Manning, Chelsea Manning, so upset that she downloaded, super copied, the massive array of the Afghanistan war logs, the Iraq war logs, the diplomatic cables. I've read more diplomatic cables through WikiLeaks and what Chelsea Manning gave to us that I read in 16 years in the State Department in diplomacy. And people around the world have read that too. In every major newspaper in, in the world, they have published the diplomatic logs that pertain to their country. And their country men and women have been astounded about some of the sneaky little things that were going on. Sneaky little things. 
So it's really important that we stand ready to challenge our government, and I say that with nearly 40 years of experience in the government, that we should not be trusting our government, that we have to hold it accountable, and sometimes it takes, it takes taking a deep breath, and it takes having courage to stand up to the government. It takes courage, like Medea Benjamin standing up in the president's press conference and uh, challenging him on drones and on Guantanamo and then getting hauled out of there. Not arrested, though, interestingly enough. It takes courage like Kathy Kelly of going to Iraq, going to Iraq to be a human shield so that when the United States of America started bombing Baghdad, there were going to be some Americans there that were going to watch what was going to happen and if any of them got killed, that their families and their organizations were going to raise hell with our own government about it. You know, this is International, or this is Women's History Week, and it is uh, the month in which International Women's Day occurs, March 8th, and Medea and I had traveled to the Middle East to go into Gaza for International Women's Day. She and I both in 2009, five years ago, had gone into Gaza with a group of 60 people right after the Israeli attack on Gaza that killed 1,450 people, wounded 5,000, and left 50,000 homeless five years ago. Well, five years later, another international delegation, 100 women from seven countries were to go into Gaza in solidarity with the, with the people that are living uh, under extraordinarily stressful conditions. Gaza, this little, little strip, 25 miles long, 5 miles wide, 1.8 million people there. It's one of the most densely populated places in the world. It is being attacked by the Israelis almost on a daily basis. People are being killed in Gaza. The Israelis say, well, there are rockets that are coming out of Gaza, and they're hitting places in Israel, and that's true, and no one condones that. But if you were in a pressure cooker, if you were in an open-air prison, controlled on four sides, if you couldn't get out, if you were stuck in the cow, the cab, what you call it? <laughs> wherever you live, you're <laughs> to 10 miles that way, 10 miles that way, and two miles in that direction, and you were going to have to spend months, years here, never getting out of that border. And then the people from Chicago started throwing stuff at you. They, they said, you need to be on a diet. You need to be on a diet. We're not gonna let anything come into your area. We're gonna control all access into it. Every one of the semi-trailers that brings in food, we will check it. And we'll take off supplies from it if we don't think it's you, that you need it. And we're going to bomb the hell out of you. Know, we're going to bust up the homes for 50,000 people, and then we're not going to send in any supplies to let you rebuild. Well, that's really what's going on in Gaza. So this year, we went to be a part of International Women's Day. Uh, the last time that we had been in here, in fact, all three of us were in Gaza in November of 2012 after the last major Israeli attack. We went in there in November of 2012 to see with our own eyes what had happened in that five-day attack. Kathy, Medea, and myself, and 20 others that in one week had dropped what they were doing and had traveled to Cairo, Egypt, and then made our way across the Sinai and then got into Gaza to write up what had happened, to take pictures of what had happened, to come back to groups like you all to explain what was going on there. So this year, we were going, 100 women from seven countries, and Medea was one of the first ones to arrive. She arrived about three hours before my flight landed, and when I got to the hotel in Cairo where I was staying, the French delegation, part of whom had arrived, said, Medea's been detained at the airport. The Egyptians aren't letting her in, into the country. So we started calling the U.S. Embassy, calling, calling, and finally we got Medea, by that time, had been detained, put in a detention facility with some other women who let her borrow their cell phone for a while. And uh, over the night, we kept saying, why is she being detained? Why, why was she detained, not me? I mean, we've both been through Cairo endless times over the last five years. The next morning, 
the guards came, the security people came and dragged her out, physically dragging her out, assaulting her to the extent that her arm is was dislocated. She was stomped on the back. She was thrown onto an airplane to go to Turkey where she was put in a hospital once she got there. Of the delegation, out of the 100, 80, 82 of them actually traveled from their homes to Cairo. Of the 82, only 16 of us were allowed into Egypt. The rest were detained at the airport, sent back home. Sent back home. Because the Egyptians have, set, have the Egyptians are now part of the blockade of Gaza, the quarantine of Gaza, that fourth border, the southern border of Gaza, that has been controlled by the Egyptians. Now they have said, we are stopping movement through there. No more supplies can go through the tunnels, the endless tunnels that were built under Gaza to relieve the stress from the Israeli blockade on three sides. What's going on in Egypt should, should concern us all. You know, a revolution there in 2011, a revolution, Tahrir Square, freedom, freedom, and then a military regime, interim regime, and then an election, an elected government that was overthrown by the military. The People's Revolution, now they're calling that one. The People's Revolution that's now turning on them, where now you have a massive crackdown by the new military government that's even more brutal than the Mubarak government was five years ago. So none of us actually got to Gaza this time. None of us got out of Cairo. The Egyptians were saying, it's too dangerous for you because there's an insurgency going on in the Sinai, and there is. But what's going on with the degradation of civil liberties, where 20,000 activists now from Egypt that were part of Tahrir Square are now thrown in jail. That people are being dragged out of taxis when the taxi driver, the good citizen, says the man in the back is an activist. I heard him talking to the policeman at the checkpoint. So this issue of human rights, civil rights, the things that people were striving for in the 1960s so that we had the, the civil rights uh, movement, civil rights legislation to give civil rights to people. People around the world are still yearning for their civil rights. And sometimes we that are working here in the United States and we work with our local communities and then our state levels and then sometimes at the national level, Sometimes it's good for us to travel, to travel to these other countries, whether it's Afghanistan, where Kathy has spent so much of her time, or Yemen, or Pakistan, or going into Gaza, or going down to Cuba. It's important that we get out and see what's going on and really evaluate with our own eyes what's happening, because I guess my bottom line is we really can't trust our government. So be questioning, be a person of dissent, be a person that has the courage of your convictions and get some good friends to rally around you. So with that, let's change the world. Thank you.